Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so since the last episode, replaced the capsule on there. This thing is, I, I can't get this any tighter. So I swear, I, I get them tight and then they get loose on me, I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna have to email these guys. All right, so uh, last wine of the night that I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, reviewing. Um, so this is another underground cellar wine. Uh, let's just get right into it. This is the 2011 Table five um, from uh, Carter Cellars and um, well MC MC Wines, uh, but Carter Cellars. Um, I'm sorry, Napa Valley Red Wine. All right, uh, so I'm going to read you a little notes on this. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, it's a Cab Merlot and Petit Verdot. Uh, blend aged 21 months in new and seasoned French oaks, oaks, oak, uh, only 280 cases produced owner Mark Carter of Carter Cellars and the Carter house, which I believe that's the restaurant that is referenced in this wine. Uh, and his winemaker, Mike Smith hit it off some years ago at the Carter house on table five. Um, this This wound up, it says wine, this wound up being the table that Mike also landed the gig at Schrader Cellars uh, when he met Fred Schrader there uh, and Colgan. Um, so when they created this fun project, it was only fitting that they would call it Lucky Table 5. Uh, it sells for about $38, though it looks like they only made two vintages, the 10 and the 11, because when you go to Carter Cellars' uh, website, it there's no mention at all of this wine uh but they do mention the story about how he kind of got into things and met you know colgan schrader blah 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 so um anyway i am interested in trying this bordeaux blend uh i got it from underground sellers 38 bucks that was like i think that was like the intro the entry level on it, it wasn't an upgrade so so just real quick on the color it's it's definitely i mean it's a seven year old wine and you see some browning on on the on the wine um so ooh, interesting so i would say some oxidation has been going on here uh there's a little stewed fruit There's also like a, <clears throat> again, kind of like a, a, a cheese component. A little smoked meat. Cured meat. Blackberry. Um, um, um. Not cedar box, but like, like wood. A little bit, a little hint of cocoa. But yeah, prune, kind of prune-like, raisinated. Yeah, so let's check it out. Table five must have been a nice table.
So, okay. You know how I like to throw that word chemical out occasionally, but then I go, well, is that coffee? So it's like that coffee, roasted coffee flavor. It's like coffee covered, whatever, espresso, espresso, um, crusted, whatever, um, chocolate, a chocolate, a, a chocolate coffee raisin. It's, it's really an apt description of that. So what does that mean? I know it's a good wine and I will probably enjoy it, but I'm not a fan of coffee. So, um, but I can tell it's a well-made wine. Uh, but yeah, you got the blackberry, you got the, you know, chocolate covered, you know, uh, coffee, chocolate covered raisin. Um, the woods there, um, it's not as, I guess I'm talking about raisin, but it's, I don't like on the nose, I get more prune. Whereas on the, on the palate, I don't get as much prune. The coffee's kind of going away, so I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it a little bit more. Um, but it's more black fruit, purple fruit, um, spices. Um, got clove, cinnamon, vanilla. Um, a little smokiness. There's there's a, there's a little bit of like age to a little bit of oxidation to it. Um, so it's, it's it's the fruit is not like super ripe. Um, it's a little more muted because it's got a little more age to it. So it, it, it kind of drinks closer to an old world wine, but not like full old world. Um, it's more of a serious wine. This is more of a food wine. Um, I can see having um, a little bit heartier meats, uh, sausages, um, barbecue to kind of stand up to it. Um, like if you had like a coffee rub, uh, you know, freaking I don't know, brisket or something like that, this would probably be just fan freaking tastic if you like that sort of stuff. Um, cheeses. Mm hmm. I mean, you're probably not gonna be able to find this out in the market anywhere, but if you do find a bottle, um, if it's still 38 bucks, it's, it's probably a good, it's a good buy. If the wine shop is like, man, I try and get rid of it and they sell for like 20 bucks, you should, you should definitely buy it. But even at $38, it's, it's worth it. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, as always, click the links above to frame me up. Click the link below to find out more about the, the winery. Um, I'll see if I can find another link about actual table five, you know, this, this particular wine, but at least give you an idea who the winery is. Throw me some ducats, that would be helpful. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.